Hey guys, uh, so really excited to be here with you today. Uh, I was able to grab some time with our Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Josh Trudd, and hopefully over the next uh, couple of weeks and months and many years, uh, we're gonna have an opportunity to have a lot of conversations about uh, how we can know what we should be doing to help our bodies. And uh, where I'd like to start, just because I learned so much from you in this process, and so much of it is information that I really think we should all know. One of the most impactful things that I learned uh, was around the concept of what we now call form, dose, and quality. Um, I think that the question that uh, comes before that is, what should I be taking? What actual vitamin or mineral should I be taking? We're gonna address that in another video because it's a, it's a much bigger concept, right? Sure. It'll take a little while. Um, but in particular, this is actionable information that you guys can use around what is the proper form, what is the proper dose, and how do we actually discern quality? So, uh, Dr. Trey, I'd love to understand, you know, explain to me again this concept of form. What does that mean? Sure. Yeah, one of the common misconceptions out there about vitamins is that, for example, vitamin E is vitamin E is vitamin E. And um, in reality, there are at least eight types of vitamin E, eight forms of vitamin E. Okay. Right? So four of them are in a family of molecules called tocopherols, alpha, beta, gamma, delta, tocopherol. And the other four are called tocotrienols, alpha, beta, gamma, delta, tocotrienol. Um, for many years, for decades, the only version that you would find in supplements was alpha tocopherol. The other seven were ignored. Um, and over time, studies came out showing that high doses of alpha tocopherol are not good for you, that they may increase cancer risk and cause other problems. So my job as the doctor is when, you know, when a patient comes to me and says, hey, this, this story just came out in the New York Times that says I shouldn't be taking vitamin E it's gonna increase my risk of prostate cancer. Mm. My next question is, oh, what form was that study done on? Mm. And invariably, when it comes to vitamin E, it's turned out to be alpha tocopherol. So depending what you want, you know, those forms do different things. And right. if you're interested, for example, in cancer prevention, you'd be much better off using delta tocotrienols. Mm. And that's not commonly found, I've never seen it in a multivitamin. It can be obtained as a standalone product from you know very good sources, mm -hmm. and that would be my preference. Yeah, and I think that that's such a good example to me, and it's the one that uh, really made it hit home is that vitamin E has at least eight different forms, and they're not created equal. And I, you know, as a layman, now I kind of have a better idea of what I should be looking for on a label. On a label, right? Like I should be able to read a label and say, well, it says vitamin E, but what does it say in the parentheses? What form is it? Right. Um, and I think what we're saying is, is that we want to look for something that uh, in its proper form is a do delta tocotrienol. Um, right. So uh, it, it curtails into the second question, which became uh, really important uh, to me as in my learning process, which is around dose. Sure. So uh, one of the things that I think a lot of us hear is that, oh, why do I take vitamins? It's just gonna give me really expensive pee, right? right, right. And um, it seems as though that's actually a more complex answer, which is first, uh, of course, are you taking the right thing? And then are you taking the right form? And then there's this question of dose. Yeah, Yeah. so that's a, a, a multi-layered answer. Um, one, one issue with dose is that a lot of supplements are not well absorbed, particularly plant-based supplements. Mm -hmm like turmeric or milk thistle. So milk thistle, if you swallow it, it does, it's been well studied to have benefits on detoxification and liver function, mm -hmm. but it doesn't absorb very well. So some companies have found that if you bind it to phosphatidylcholine, mm -hmm. which is a, a type of healthy fat that your cell membranes are made of, mm -hmm then that phosphatidylcholine will serve as like a water taxi and carry the milk thistle into the cells where it can help you. Uh, so that's a great example where, what form of milk thistle should I be using? Well, I should be using one that's bound to phosphatidylcholine. But the next question is, okay, how much? Well, studies have been done on that in many cases. You have to find a, a brand where the companies that manufacture it have done human trials, something called a PK study or a pharmacokinetic study, okay. which means we gave them three doses and then we drew their blood, we saw how much of it absorbed, and we looked at their liver function tests and see if it improved, right? So 
it's it's not a mystery for for many supplements it's not a mystery how much how much you need you shouldn't be guessing mm -hmm. and just say well i'll get this bottle off the shelf and i'll take some right right it looks on the side it says two to four capsules a day right well what is it two is it four right right so these things have been worked out for right. for many many supplements and and i view my job is figuring out reading those studies and using the exact amount that was in that study showing, hey, this is beneficial for humans. Right. And I think that's, again, one of those things that's so interesting to me is that first, there is real research out there um, yeah. and we should be using it. Uh, these are peer reviewed scientific research papers. Um, and in many cases, using human data, um, human trial data, as opposed to just um, being in a laboratory with mice or, right. um, or some, other, some other mechanism. Um, and that ultimately brings up to me kind of the third big question, which is if we are taking the right thing, which again, we're going to come back to that in its proper form mm -hmm. at its proper dose, how do we start to protect ourselves against understanding quality sure. um, and knowing that we're getting something? Because just as if it's on a, you know, a, uh, a shelf at a grocery store or on the web, on a website somewhere, how do we really know what question should we ask? Right, right. So there are simple things where you can look at the bottle and make sure it says CGMP, you know, that it's certified that they're using good manufacturing practices. Mm -hmm. um, but for, for consumers, there are, um, there are many companies that are putting out good products, mm -hmm. but it's also well known that there are quite a lot of supplements that don't really contain in the bottle what it says on the label. Mm -hmm. So things that you can use to protect yourself. Um, you want to use um, a, a brand that's been independently tested by a third party. Right. Um, and there are two ways that a consumer can, can figure that out. One is there's, there's a website called Emerson Ecologics, and they have something called a quality program. So you can go to their website and click on the quality program, and they will show you a list of all the companies that have submitted to independent third party testing. If it's a product, um, where there are things from many different companies uh, that are being put into one because you wanted the best form of delta tocotrienol and the best form of milk thistle, right. and that couldn't all be obtained from one company because they're patented, right. then you want to know that um, a third party is working with the, 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 the group that's putting all the supplements together right. and you know testing those. Mm -hmm. um, and that's that should be readily available on their website. You should be right. able to figure that out. And is there anything on the label that we should look out for uh, in terms of just things that we should know? Well, you want to make sure that uh, obviously look that there, there are no added, um, well, fillers is one common thing. I have a lot of patients that come to me that say, hey, listen, I don't want to take magnesium stearate. You know, I've heard that magnesium stearate is kind of like soap when it gets into your body. I want to use an organic uh, rice filler. Mm -hmm. um, because they do need to use like flow agents to, when you're mixing a number of ingredients together. Right. There has to be something in there to keep it from all gumming up in the machine. Right. So you want something that's organic. Obviously you want non-GMO. Yeah. Um, and most of us that are in the wellness world are, want stuff that's gluten free. Right. Right. So there are a number of things like that that are easy to check for on the label. So, yeah. And I think that that's so, so interesting. Right. And, you know, thinking about how these things are compiled and where they come from and the independent testing and some of these things that we as consumers, especially as we're all getting more cognizant of what we're eating, if it's organic or not, or what water we're drinking, you know, and, sure. um, these are things that, that uh, should be more readily available to us. And, and I appreciate you taking the time to, to answer that question for us. Um, thank you guys for, for joining us. We're going to have a whole bunch of other conversations I'm here sure. with sure. Dr. Truck because I am always asking questions, um, but really appreciate your time. and. Uh, We'll talk to you guys soon. Leave uh, a comment or a note and let us know if you have any additional questions or anything that we can help answer. Uh, we are always here to help. Thanks, Dr. T. Thank you.